What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, we've got another new Transformers TCG card to talk about. It is a little bit awkward, and it is a little bit complicated, as a bunch of cards tend to be in this new set, and I say that incidentally with nothing but love, these things make me extremely excited, and... It's a non-Titan Master, non-Combiner. It's a regular character. We've not seen many regular characters so far. In fact, I, I think this might be the first regular character that's been spoiled from this set. Shout out to the lovely Meta Maniacs for spoiling this card, for revealing it. Make sure you go and give them a follow over on Facebook. I'll pop a link in the description. You know my rule by now. When we have people giving these reveals, showing us these cards... Let's show them some love, because they love the games that we love, and they're trying to help and push this game forward. That's awesome. And secondly, community spoilers are amazing. And not every company does them. Wizards do for Transformers, so let's make sure we let them know they're appreciated. So what do we got? We got Bludgeon. Bludgeon is a lovely new character card. And we've got an 11-star character which is fairly expensive, but the stats are all right. We got 13 health, which is all right. A little bit on the low side for an 11-star character, but it's all right. Attack of 4 or 6, 4 is standard, 6 is good. Defense of 1 or 3, 1 is not great, 3 is pretty gosh darn good. So when you're in bot mode, you're a pretty functional, pretty good attacker. And when you're in tank mode, you're a pretty decent defender, which you really should be right in tank mode and we might as well start off in tank mode here what we see is pierce one guarantees you do at least one damage while attacking and tough one lets you flip one more battle card while defending and this is all right you see defensive decks tend to be played a lot of the time blue black Blue icons to give you extra defense, black icons to give you a little bit of pierce. So you're sitting there defending and you haven't got huge attack, but you've got enough pierce that you're getting some damage going through. So sitting there as a tank, we've got some options, more on that in a moment. Along with a defensive free, is going to mean you're staying around for a little while. Then you add in tough one, so you're doing a little bit more tough, a little bit more blue, a little bit more likely to stay around on the field and you're doing all right. Pierce 1 isn't phenomenal, but Pierce 1 gives you a good start. Then you play some black icon cards to give you a little bit of extra Pierce. Maybe even go really into the Pierce and play something like Piercing Blaster. That would give you Pierce 3, putting you up to Pierce 4 to guarantee 4 damage. Remember, if your Pierce is higher than your attack, you only actually do damage equal to your attack, not Pierce. It's whichever one is lower. So you've got a nice defensive piercing option going on. I quite like it. Then we go into bot mode, and Bludgeon goes up to 6 attack, becomes a really nice attacker. And when an enemy takes non-attack damage, it gets minus 1 defense until end of turn. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good. And this doesn't say once per turn, or the first time. It says when an enemy takes non-attack damage. Now, we will need a ruling on this, but it seems fairly clear to me, and disagree with me in the comment section if you wish, that each instance of non-attack damage would lower the defense by one. So if you did two damage, it would lower the defense by one. If you then did one damage, it would lower it by another one. That is not guaranteed, it's not an official ruling, but if we have a look at the wording, when an enemy takes non-attack damage, it gets minus one defense, so try and do multiple instances of it. The issue for me here is that it's getting a little bit tricksy, because when you're talking non-attack damage, we generally want ranged characters, so we've got Armed Hovercraft as an upgrade, one damage to each of your opponent's characters, and Marksmanship as an action to do two damage to one of your opponent's characters. Sounds good, but you're not ranged in bot mode, you're ranged in alt mode, and that's a bit of a pain, because you need to be ranged in order to use marksmanship or armed hovercraft. Now, you can play other ranged characters with this. The Airstrike Patrol are good characters. I see a fair amount of play. And they're all ranged characters, and they're very low in terms of attack cost. So that would certainly be an option to just play this with three of the Airstrike Patrol. You could do that. 
but you would need another ranged character to really take advantage. As a side note, you're also melee character in bot mode, so if you really want to get defensive, you may well want to play body armor. You have to attach body armor in bot mode and then flick to alt mode. Body armor works in alt mode, but you've got to attach it in bot mode when you're a melee character. Okay. So we have actually got a really nice defender in alt mode and a really nice attacker in bot mode. And if you can make the most of this, you can have kind of a tough 4 PS4 free defense tank. Or you could have a 6 attack character going against somebody with 0 defense. That Both of those could be good. Now as a side note here in alt mode, you are also a tank. Which means you get certain advantages. You've got composite armor. Can only be put on tanks. But if you flip at least one black icon, you do one damage to the attacker. Bearing in mind, I did say black icons are going to be pretty good for this. So, that's quite nice. Plus, you're going cheeky damage anyway. That's quite cool. Uh, crushing treads. Nice upgrade utility. You put on tanks and get pierce equal to its defense. Well, this might even be a better option here than Piercing Blaster. Because now your defense is free, which gives you PS4. Oh, look, you're already up to PS4. That, that, that sounds quite good. And let's not forget, we've always got something like Hunger Down, which flips you into tank mode, and then you put an armor on from the scrap pile. And we love composite armor, but it falls off after you battle. But that's all right, because... You get it back again using Hunger Down. Yeah, this gets pretty good pretty quickly. I love that it's a tank here. I think Composite Armor along with Crushing Treads and Hunger Down, you're onto a winner here. Can you afford to do both? Or do you have to choose one? It's a good question. Can you go really defensive with Pierce while also trying to get attacking and lower your opponent's defense with cheeky damage, etc.? Quite possibly. Could work. Now, we've also got some other tricks for Bludgeon here. Bludgeon actually has its own stratagem. Remember, the rare stratagems are going to be for old characters. The common stratagems are going to be for characters in this set. Certainly in terms of sealed, you don't want to be opening a stratagem for a character that isn't in the set. But opening a stratagem for a character that you might also get in sealed is going to give you a heck of an advantage. And sealed Transformers is awesome. The stratagem is a one-star stratagem, as are all the ones we've seen so far. When your Bludgeon Electric Warrior attacks, and you don't flip a battle card that has more than one battle icon, put one of the cards you flipped into your hand after the battle. Quite frankly, Bludgeon is coming out as a... You have got to build your deck super carefully. Because you see, I've already made no bones about the fact that one of my favorite cards with this is Composite Armor. I think Composite Armor with Bludgeon is a phenomenal combo. I mean, I've not even mentioned the plus one attack, the plus three defense. I just like the orange icon, black icon, and doing cheeky damage when you flip black icons. That's all I was looking at. And yet, you've got the plus one attack and the plus three defense as well. It's a phenomenal card. But it has two icons. Which means if I flip it while I'm attacking with Bludgeon, I don't get to put one of the flipped cards into my hand. So, to be super clear, when you're attacking, you look at all of the cards you flipped. If all of them only have one battle icon or zero, you get to choose any one of them and put them into your hand, ready to use next turn. But if any one of them has two icons like Composite Armor, you do not get to choose one of those cards and put it into your hand. So now you need to start weighing up the pros and cons. You need to go, well, I really like Composite Armor, and probably other ones. Bashing Shield is one that sees a fair amount of play. It's got a green icon, makes it easier to find. It gets rid of an armor from your opponent. It's got an orange icon and plus one defense. But again, that's another one where you're going, oh, can I really afford to do so? Wedge Formation is a really nice card, which could work really nicely for this character. Now, it's actually got three battle icons on. It's got a black and a green and an orange. But remember, we like black icons in this deck. And you repair one damage from a melee character 
or you draw a card if you've got a ranged character on the battlefield. So if you're playing ranged characters for the cheeky damage with bludgeon, you draw a card and repair a damage. But if you've only got bludgeon, you can repair a damage in bot mode or draw a card in alt mode. It's a good card, but it's got more than one icon. See where we're going with this? But when this works, let's be clear, this is a phenomenal card. When this works, you get an extra card at the end of a battle. Kind of like every single card in your deck has a green icon, but you don't need to swap a card from your hand for the green icon card. You just get to pick it up. It's awesome. And we're not done there because we've actually got a really nice action card as well. Master of Metallicato. Metallicato? I don't know. Now, it's got these hybrid icons. Or conditional icons, as I like to call them. So, if your character is a specialist, you get plus one attack when attacking. It's an orange icon. If you've got a ranged character and you flip it, it's a black icon. Now, we like the black icon in range, remember. If you've got a melee character and you flip it, it's got a blue icon. Remember, those icons don't do anything unless you've got the right character. So, if I am attacking in alt mode, I'm not a specialist. I don't get the plus one attack. If I'm defending in alt mode, I'm not a melee character. I don't get the plus one defense. But if I am attacking in alt mode, I am a rage character, so I do get the plus one pierce. There we go. You're not going to be able to use all of those. I mean, you need to be a specialist and a rage character in order to get the plus one attack and the plus one pierce at the same time. Sorry. The thing is, they still count. So... If I'm flipping icons, let's say, top of my head, Metroplex, this still counts as a blue and an orange. And we do need to go off on a little bit of a side note here and have a quick mention of Metroplex. I know I'm not the only one that saw this and thought Metroplex, but I still did see it and think Metroplex. You see, Metroplex has the phenomenal skill. When this attacks and you flip at least two white, two orange, and two blue, you tap each enemy and do one damage to each enemy. It's one of the best skills in the game. The problem is what we really need is blue-orange cards. Now, back in the base set, back in Wave 1, we did get a couple of these. We got Roll Out. And we got Matrix of Leadership. But after that, we never got these double icon cards, red, blue, without star cards. And Metroplex is a 25 star character. You don't get the opportunity to play it. Well, this is an orange blue without any kind of star icon on. Now, as a side note, Metroplex is a ranged character. So when it defends, you don't get the benefit of the blue. When it attacks, you don't get the benefit of the orange. You only get the pierce because you're only a ranged character. But they still count as orange and blue when you flip them. To put it another way, when you're attacking with Metroplex, you don't get plus one attack for the orange icon. You're not a specialist. You do get the plus one pierce. You are ranged. But they both count the orange and blue for your ability because they still count you just don't get the plus one attack you're not a specialist so even outside of the whole bludgeon thing we're talking about this is a great great card for metroplex but we've not actually said what master of metallicato does choose one of your characters when it attacks this turn and you flip battle cards it gets plus one attack until the end of battle for each different color among battle icons that you flipped oh yeah, that's pretty gosh darn good. Because you see, if you flip one of these, that's plus three attack. That's awesome. Know how I mentioned Wedge Formation earlier? Yeah, Wedge Formation has three different battle icons. That's why I love Wedge Formation. Well, no, to be fair, I love it for the other reason I said. But it's one of the reasons I love Wedge Formation so much. And now you've got at least six cards in your deck that have three different battle icons and can give you plus three attack. But now we're in an awkward situation because this and the stratagem do not go hand in hand. 
Mastro Metallicato, you really, really need to have as many cards as you've got with multiple battle icons. But the stratagem wants you to play single battle icons. And the annoying thing is, there's no green icon on this action card, so you do need to draw into it, because if you flip it while attacking or defending, you don't get it into your hand, because there's no green icon. But, the stratagem will allow you to pick up one of the cards you flipped, but not if you flipped cards with more than one battle icon, which this does have. And it does have more than one battle icon, remember. Even though you only get the effect of the icon if you're a certain type of character, they still count as the icons. You don't get to say, Ooh, I'm only a melee character. This only counts as one icon. No, you flipped three icons. So you've really got a choice to make. Honestly here, I don't know if I'm playing the stratagem. What I want to go with bludgeon, I'm, I'm fairly clear, right? I want to go Defensive Pierce, Cheeky Damage. I'm not going to worry about playing Orange Icons and all of that. I'm going to go Cheeky Damage, Defensive Pierce, but knowing that when I get the Cheeky Damage going in bot mode, I'm lowering my opponent's defense, and hopefully I'm going to draw into the Master of Metallicato to get extra attack that way. But then I'm playing lots of Jewel and Treble Icon cards, the stratagem's not going to work. The thing is, the stratagem is one star. So even if I'm playing double and treble icon cards, unless there is statistically zero chance of hitting entirely single icon cards, if I've got a star left over, I might play it anyway. I am loving the direction of Wave 5. We didn't have stuff like this in previous sets. A character where really there's not much synergy between the two halves, other than loving cheeky damage. Because you've got a melee character versus a ranged, a good attacker versus a good defender. And a character that wants to use ranged things when it's melee and melee things when it's ranged. You've then got an amazing action card and a stratagem which seem completely at odds with each other. But you know what? This looks amazing and interesting and I love it. Shout out again to the lovely folks over at Meta Maniacs for the reveal. Make sure you give them a follow. Let's give love to people giving reveals. Let's let Wizards know that we want it. And let's just support people giving love to the game. That's pretty important. For now, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think about this card. Go nuts in the comment section, but please remember the rules. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, where we talk Transformers and other games, and please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and so on. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.